ultimately that wasn't it. I called Kevin told, uh, last week of December. It got debilitating, but I worked through it. I called Kevin over the weekend and said I wasn't going to be at work after the first of the year. It got so bad that my wife and daughter made me go to a chiropractor, which I just turned 62 the other day. I'd never been to one before in my life. But uh, the pain was really, really bad. I had an appointment with my primary on 11, being stubborn. I just kept uh, putting it off and finally went there. He thought maybe I had a herniated disc to go with the rib. Set up for an MRI, which between insurance and scheduling, I couldn't get in there until the 16th of January, which ultimately showed there was a mass in my spine because that's where they were looking. Growing in my T5, T6, and uh, it had grown into my spinal column and is wrapped around my spine. On the 9th, before that, I uh, got up and I felt tingling in my legs, numbness, and my I was wobbly in my mobility. And I'm thinking, you know, what's going on with that? And started furniture walking around the house and stuff like that which progressively that got worse. Back to the 16th, they did the MRI and had the mass. Doctor called me in, said go see the bone specialist. He's like, I'm not saying it's cancer, but it looks like cancer. Where do you want to go? We opted for Sioux Falls. Got up there, they checked you in. That later in the evening, they gave me a shot of a steroid, steroid uh, muscle relaxer, which by the next morning, the tingling was gone, most of the numbness was gone, some mobility came back, so yay. Uh, Wednesday, they did more testing up there, which showed a mass in my, my right kidney, of course the mass in my spine, a spot on my upper left femur, a bunch of spots and lymph nodes through my abdomen. I got a couple lumps up here in my head, which the original one I thought was from whacking my head on a rafter working on the project where I thought I threw the rib out. Ultimately, the, uh, it grew a sister one, their cancer as well. Thursday was my dark day up there. Thursday night, laying there, I felt like there was evil in the room. I know there was evil in the room. There was a object closer to me and another one way away. Some of you may have heard pastors share this, I don't know. But I just started crying out in the name of the Lord. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My life is His. I'm in His hands. A closer one started to evaporate and disappear. That other one was still up there. I continued to cry out on the name of the Lord. That one started to strengthen and vaporize. The instant that happened, I felt a flood of love, hope, cheer, Everything just flooded through me. And pastor said that was a vision. You were in the presence of evil. Then you were in the presence of the Lord. And that's the way I'm going to operate. I'm going to do my best to be positive. I'm going to do my best to operate that way. I'm shaky talking in front of you. But at the same time, I'm doing my best to do that. On the way back to the Wednesday, like I say, Thursday was the darkest. Wednesday, they came and they wanted to do a... Uh, MRI on my brain. They never said I had one, but <laughs> <laughs> but there's those two lumps are cancer as well. They're growing on top of my skull, so they weren't worried about growing into my brain. And ultimately, while I was up there in January, they did five shots of radiation on my spine. They started my first infusion of of immune therapy. A week later, I started the chemo pill they wanted me to take. And then I went back up there three weeks later for the third one. And she, we noticed that the first lump was going down a little bit, which is good. And then the weekend before my third infusion, the devil tried to kill me again. Or he tried to kill me. And it was on that Saturday, Everything was going okay. A couple times I went in the kitchen to fix something and I was feeling kind of weak. Jim's like, go sit down, I'll, I'll take care of it. So I did. Christy and Cav came over and they were worried about that. So 
they made me call up there, which I did, and they asked if I had an OT sensor, which I didn't have, went and got one, and she said, as long as you're in the 90s, you're okay. Well, I checked it, everything, I was in the 90s, I'm okay. On that Sunday, I, everything was going all right, I checked it a few times, it was in the 90s. About eight o'clock, I needed to go to the restroom. I went in, everything was fine. I came back out, on the way to the chair, I started huffing and puffing, and I couldn't catch my breath, it was really bad. Sat down, and still couldn't catch my breath, so I checked my O2, and it was down to 82. And it's like, oh, that's not good. So I hollered at my wife, and, and uh, said I probably better go to the hospital. And she's like, yeah, we figured we'd drive herself, called a friend, he came over. I went to the bathroom again, still huffing and puffing like crazy. Got back to the chair to catch my breath, went to get up, my legs were really weak, so we called the ambulance. Went to the hospital, ultimately they called in a tech to do a CT scan. My right side, my lung was completely closed off with blood clots. The left side had one little opening. Turns out there was a couple more bullets in my leg. I could have been dead that night. They flew me to Sioux Falls. They did, uh, went up through to suck them out. At one point, one of them was big enough, he yanked it back out. I was awake through the whole thing. And all of a sudden he got nervous, grab a blanket, towel, whatever, get over here, he's bleeding out. And I'm like, dear Lord, I don't want to die. Felt the pressure, they went back in, they did get this side cleared out. They went to the left side, got that side cleared out. And they, they used a recycler to pump blood back into you. And he was worried about knocking the part of the kidney, or the one in the kidney off. I'm like, suck it out. He's like, well, I will. Yeah. But anyway, I could feel the blood running. He got done with the procedure, my, and I was awake through the whole thing. He's like, grab two units of blood, start the first one fast. Well, the recycler wasn't working, so they were sucking blood out and not putting any back in. I said, praise God, I got an oil change. <laughs> instead of pumping the cancer blood back in. But, uh, of course, I had to walk to be able to get back home. The next day, I walked around, did all that, came home, and went to go into the house, and I had to step up about two inches. I picked this leg up, and my legs disappeared. I said, I'm going down. Nothing Kim could do. I went down. The next day, my leg... I had to have people come over and help get me in the house. And the next day, my legs still weren't working. So I called up there. They said, go in. Another, another ambulance ride. Thankfully, nothing happened with the spine. That's what they were afraid of. Ultimately, they gave me it because they had weaned me off that steroid one, which affected everything, pain came back. They ended up giving me another shot of the liquid. They took it between Pastor Nick, Christy, and actually one of the paramedics, they got me back home. By the next morning, my legs were moving and work and stuff. By that afternoon, I was walking around the house again, which I praise God for that. But I was supposed to have my third infusion, they canceled that and, and uh, put, it, put, it, put it off. Well, then I was supposed to go up a week ago tomorrow for a checkup and have my third infusion. Well, get up there. My blood count for my liver was way out of whack, so she canceled the infusion and took me back off the chemo pill. And then I was supposed to, I had blood drawn Friday, hopefully everything was back in order and then I could have my next infusion. The blood count was worse. So now they upped my, that steroid. They went from cutting me back to it to tripling it, trying to say that hopefully that'll get my liver back in shape so that I can have my next infusion. And, probably cut my chemo back, but that's the medical side of it. I am working the medical, but I'm praying for the miracle. Yes. I'm expecting the miracle. Yes. But also, because oh, I was going to try to do this last week, but we weren't going to be here. Praying is talking to God all the time. You know, a person thinks you live your life, you die, you die forever. I'm still praying for that miracle. I'm also praying for another 10, 20, 30 years. 
like I want to have to grow old with my family and friends. But right now, it's whatever God wants. And I put my life in his hands. And ultimately, you know, we say heaven on earth, may your will be done. Do we live that way? We say we're laying our things at the cross, but we always pick some up. Right now, if God never answers a single prayer that I pray the way I want it, I have to be okay with that. So I am okay with that. Because ultimately, the only prayer that matters is the last, not the last, but the my salvation prayer that I prayed in that little brick church that was over by the hospital. I was, ta I was ushered to the front of that church twice. I didn't get out of that back pew. Angels took me to the front. The first time, things were okay for a while, but I backslid bad. The second time, I'm looking over my shoulder going, what are you doing? I said, Lord, I want you as my Lord and Savior. I'm not going to let go. Do we fail every day? Do we pick stuff up? Yes. When you're on top of that mountain, it's easy to take control of your life or think you are. When you're in the valley where I'm at right now, it's easy to say, Lord, take control, please. And I'm expecting that miracle that will show his power, his grace, his, his love for me. But at the same time, if he never answers another prayer the way I want, that salvation prayer is the only one that matters. Because I want to be in heaven with him. So I just want to share a little bit of that with them. And because my wife, and she's probably sitting there saying, say it, say it, say it. When they did the, the brain scan and the MRI, you know how you hear the click, it makes clicking noises and stuff. At one point, it started audibly saying, up, up, up. And I'm laying there, I'm praying, okay, Lord, I'm praying up, I'm talking up, you're up, I'm going to keep looking up. And if you give me the opportunity to share what your testimony you're building for the rest of my life testimony, I will do it. And I've had plenty of opportunities already. <laughs> but thank you very much. And I also want to say, for me and Kim, we consider it a blessing for those of you that are praying for us, that are encouraging us, that have blessed us in many, many ways from food to other things. The church for building a ramp for me, that is, that's beyond. And Roddy's crew to come and put a light in for us. But prayers are so appreciated. And we just want to thank you for every, every blessing that you guys have poured upon us. So. I probably went over what I was supposed to do. <laughs> and he asked, also asked if I would say, ushers, please come forward for the tithes and offerings. And, and uh, Lord, we just pray that you would take these, these offerings and, and put them to your use. I pray that the pastor and the board would follow your direction and, and put it to where you want them to use it and that it will be multiplied through you in your name, Jesus. Amen.